Hi everyone, thank you for signing up for December's Take Home STEM, which is all about forensic science. Uh, if you did last month's uh, program, I have to apologize. I didn't realize until after I filmed how echoey the audio was when I filmed downstairs in the basement. So now we've moved to a new location and the audio should be much better. But for those of you who are new, what audio problems? Fine. Anyway, so uh, what is forensic science? I don't know if you've ever watched any TV shows where they have um, crimes and people investigating crime scenes, but when something bad happens and the police come to investigate, they collect all sorts of bits and pieces of things that they group together and call evidence. Forensic scientists are the ones who take a look at that evidence and try and identify what the evidence is, what it means, and put the pieces together to help the detectives find whoever committed the crime so they can make the right arrest. We're not going to be doing anything super complicated like DNA sequencing because we can't, but we will be going over things like fingerprints, handwriting analysis, and some chromatography. So without further ado, let's get started on our first project. Okay, so you should have your kit handy and you should also have everything listed on the front under the have on hand section. And um, I want you to turn to the third page of your packet that's marked fact versus fiction. Fact is something that is true and fiction is something that is made up. A lot of times fiction can be um, true to life, but sometimes they make it a little bit crazier than it is in real life. And most of the forensic science on TV and movies has been changed to make it more exciting and easier to understand. So I want you to look at these questions or not really questions, but items. And I want you to tell me whether you think these things happen in real life or whether it's something that's been made up or altered for TV and movies to make the stories more exciting. We're gonna go over this at the very end. I just want you to sit down and answer this before we get started, okay? And don't worry about being right. This isn't a test. Just write down what you think and then we'll see how we do at the end. Okay, what we're gonna do right now is set up our black ink chromatography experiment. I'm not gonna go into the science because we're just setting it up. I'm gonna explain more about what's happening when we get our results. But basically what we're doing is identifying different inks. So you'll, you need your three pieces of coffee filter with a black dot on it, um, three sticks of some kind. I'm using pencils. You could use chopsticks or sticks. You just need to suspend the coffee filter over the cup. And this is the easiest way to do it. So, and three cups of water. I cannot tell you how much water to put in your cups because it depends on the size of the cup and how long your paper is. But what you do want is for when it hangs, it just touched the paper. You don't want the black ink spot to touch the water because then instead of going up our sheet of um, coffee filter, it's gonna go down into the water, which is exactly what we don't want. So you need to attach these to your pencils. You can do it with a paper clip or you can do it with tape. I'm gonna do it with tape because that's a little bit faster, although I do think paper clips are a better option. Um, so I'm going to fold the top over around the pencil and tape it just so it stays in place. You're going to do that with all three of them and then you're going to place it into your cup of water. So make sure that the water is touching the paper and nothing else. And we're going to wait for a bit because the water needs to travel up the piece of paper to our black spot. So once you have all three of these set up, um, set them to the side and we'll come back to it later. Okay, 
While our black ink chromatography experiment is working, I want you to go to the next page called Handwriting Analysis and take the handwriting sample and the magnifying glass out of your bag. One way um, scientists try and put different suspects at the scene of a crime is by analyzing handwriting. They used to think you could tell something about a person's personality, what kind of person they are by your handwriting. We now know that that is not true, but what you can do is figure out whether someone wrote something based on their handwriting. Your handwriting is unique to you, um, not only what your letters look like, but what kind of pressure you put, um, how your handwriting slant, uh, slants on the paper, all kinds of different things they use to figure out whether someone is the writer of a piece of handwriting. So your handwriting sample is the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. You might have seen this before when you're learning typing or something like that. And this is because this sentence uses all the letters of the alphabet. So you have all the letters of the alphabet to match the suspect. When you turn the page, you'll see we have three different people that wrote the same thing. What you're gonna have to do is take a look at your magnifying glass and try and figure out whether A, B, or C wrote the handwriting sample. I'm gonna give you a little hint. Um, some, the, the handwriting looks very similar, but some of the letters are done very differently. So I want you to take a look at the handwriting samples and analyze and find the letters that you think are different that will help you figure out who wrote this handwriting sample. The answer to this is going to be at the back of the packet. So um, I want you to make your guess. You can just circle whoever you think is the culprit and you'll find out whether you were right at the end. Okay, so happy hunting. So one of the more common things you might see in movies and TV with forensic scientists and police in general is dusting for fingerprints. So what are fingerprints? The fingerprints are the little folds in your skin that develop before you're born. And no two people have the same fingerprints, not even identical twins. So forensic scientists collect fingerprints from crime scenes in order to see who's been at the scene of a crime. And using fingerprints to catch criminals isn't a new thing. People were using handprints as evidence in China in the year 221 BCE. And that's about, well, that's over 2000 years ago. So it's really nothing new, but it is, has been a technique that forensic scientists and police use for quite a while. So how do forensic scientists find fingerprints when someone hasn't covered their fingers in paint like we're going to do? Well, they use powder to dust for fingerprints. The dust sticks to fingerprints that are left by the sweat, oil, and dirt on your hands. Then they kind of put a, a tape or an adhesive over the print so it can be lifted and analyzed back in the lab. Um, I tried different ways of dusting for prints, but without the specialized dust, it was very hard for me to dust a print and lift it. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to put some paint on our fingertips so we can analyze our own fingerprints. So you're going to have a little bit of paint in your kit. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a paintbrush to put a thin layer of paint on my fingertip, but you also need to have your magnifying glass out and your piece of scrap paper. And I'll show you why in a second. So, have my finger 
I'm putting some of the paint on and put it on the whole tip. Don't just do the very top. So you see that line? You're gonna put paint all over that. Now, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna blot it on the paper. Cause the first time you do it, you're not gonna get a real clear print. But after you do that, then you're gonna wanna roll it onto your piece of paper. So you can see the print clearly. So the reason we have the piece of scrap paper is that so we can blot it first because it's really hard to make out the pattern on this one and it's much easier to make out the pattern on this one. So once you do all five of your fingers, you are going to take your magnifying glass and take a look at it and try and match it to the ones up at the top. So there are three kinds of main fingerprint patterns, the loop, the whorl, and the arch. So take a look at your fingerprint and see what kind of pattern you have. Looking at my fingerprint, it looks like this one is mainly an arch pattern. But I'd have to do all five of my fingers just to be sure. I'm not gonna do that, but you are going to do that. And then when you're done, you can write at the top of each finger, which is the most prominent pattern, whether your finger has a lot of loops, whorls, or arches, you'll find that some of your fingers have a mix, and but what comes up the most is gonna be your dominant pattern. So just circle the answer down there. Okay, all right, let's move on to the next experiment. Okay, so the next part of forensic science we're going to explore is impressions. Most forensic scientists don't do everything. They specialize in um, analyzing certain types of evidence. And one of the mo more common forms of evidence you can find at a scene are impressions. Have you ever noticed that you can see your footprints after you step in snow or mud? These are impressions and forensic scientists use impressions from all different kinds of things to figure out what happened at a crime scene. What we're going to be looking at today are tire tread impressions. So different brands of tires have different patterns and identifying the tire can help narrow down suspects. So what we're going to do here is have your magnifying glass out again. There are four different tire treads in your packet. So you're gonna examine them, kind of look for what the pattern is, and then turn to the next page. And you can actually remove this page from your packet and look at the four tires here. You'll notice oops, the impressions are labeled A, B, C, D. What I want you to do on the next page is write down which tire you think made which impression. And when you're done with that, I want you to think about something. A lot of cars have the same tires. So how do you think identifying tire treads can help investigators? Now, a lot of times with science, it's not about right or wrong answers. It's about being able to think and think critically. So write down whatever you think might, the answer might be. We're gonna go over it at the end. So, write down which tire you think made which impression. Write down why you think this helps forensic scientists. And then we're going to move on to the next experiment. Finally, we're coming back to our chromatography experiment. By this time, your ink should have spread a little bit and separated into different colors. So you can see uh, the results of mine here. This is the Rose Art marker. 
the Crayola washable marker and the Crayola shimmer marker. Now, when you look at it, are they the same as yours? Are they a bit different? It could be either. But first, I said I'd explain the science, so let's go into it a little bit. Chromatography is the separation of a mixture into its different parts. In this case, we're separating the different color or pigments that make up black ink. Black ink isn't always just black. A lot of times, it's a lot of different colors put together to make black. And we use chromatography to separate them. Now, forensic scientists use many different kinds of chemicals to break down evidence found at a crime scene. And this was a simple experiment to show you how that works. All the markers I used are water soluble, which means they're made with water and can be separated in water. This exact experiment wouldn't work with permanent markers like Sharpies. You would need to use rubbing alcohol to dissolve the ink in Sharpies since they're made with rubbing alcohol. All right, so, whoop. I just breathed and it went flying. Okay, again, so what do you notice about the three strips? Do they all look the same? And don't think about what mine look like. Just think about yours. Do they all look the same? Do they have different colors? Uh, blue and green are at the top of mine and red and pink are at the bottom. So they are pretty similar. What does green have in it? The color. Yellow and blue, right? So it's similar to the blue because it already has blue in it. And pink is going to have red in it. So even though there are two different uh, color patterns here, it's a similar process. The blue has gone to the top and the red has gone to the bottom. So why does this happen? And why is this helpful for scientists? The reason the colors move at different rates is because of molecule size. So very quickly, a molecule is two or more atoms smushed together and they make up everything on earth. Us, the chair, your food, air, everything. And smaller molecules move faster than bigger molecules. So which color do you think would have the smallest molecules? Remember that the smaller the molecule, the faster it moves. If you're not sure, I'll give you a clue. What direction was the water moving? Was the water going down the paper or was the water going up the paper? So write down which color you think has the smallest molecules. All right, so I'm gonna tell you the answer now. Since the water was moving up the paper, the color at the top is going to have the smallest molecules. It is the fastest. So how does this help? It, with forensic scientists, it helps them identify different parts of a mixture. Um, and in this one, it helped us identify the different colors. You can use markers on your paper to draw what you see. I just wrote down the colors I found. I found blue, a little bit of purple, and red in the rose art one. The purple is probably just a blue and red mixing together, but I thought I'd put it down anyway. The Crayola washable, I saw green and pink, and the shimmer Crayola was, interestingly enough, just black. There weren't many different colors found in this one. And this is why we do experiments. Sometimes we have surprising results. Okay. So next, we're going to move on to the end of this program. In the very beginning, I mentioned that the forensic scientist shown on TV and in movies is different from what happens in reality. And I asked you to fill out what you thought was fact and what you thought was fiction or made up. I'm gonna go over that now. The first one's easy, that's a fact. 
we went over dusting for fingerprints in the video but it is something that forensic scientists and law enforcement make use of all the time so moving on forensic scientists personally track down the bad guys that is majorly fiction the reason they do that is to make the tv show or the movie more exciting and you know that you know it does make it more exciting but it's not what really happens in real life um forensic scientists spend most of their time in a lab they don't interview suspects or make arrests or follow the clues outside the lab this is what police detectives do but you know it does make for exciting tv next up working with the most up-to-date high-tech machines unfortunately that is fiction while forensic scientists do work with scientific equipment many police departments don't have the money or the people to have the most up-to-date high-tech equipment so while there are labs that do have these super cool machines it is not every single forensic lab or police department all right moving on getting lab results right away and right away they don't mean in 10 seconds they can mean in a couple hours or the same day but unfortunately that is also fiction for the same reason as not having up-to-date high-tech machines most labs and police departments don't have the money or the people to get results really quickly uh, backlogs lack of personnel not enough equipment lack of funds that all contributes to that so for example it can take a forensic lab one to two months to process dna evidence why don't we see that on tv well because that would be boring to have them wait for months to get lab results back so so they speed up the process testifying in court that is a fact Forensic scientists can be called on to be expert witnesses so they can explain the science or technology in a case to a jury in a way that anyone can understand. Because a jury are people like uh, your parents, your family members, adults that may not know anything about science and technology, but they still have to make a decision based on the evidence. So then forensic scientists can come in and explain what they found and why what they found matters. Okay, and honestly, if you didn't get any of those right, that's fine, this is how we learn. But this is definitely the difference between the forensic scientists you see on TV and what actually happens. Okay, so the black ink chromatography was our last project in the forensic science STEM. I hope you had a really good time. I hope you learned something. And I would like you to check out the page marked extras. It's right before the answers. And um, there is there are a couple of fun facts, but also there is a website you can go to by scanning the QR code or uh, typing in the website that will teach you how um, use a microscope with an interactive game. It was pretty fun. So thank you for signing up. I hope you sign up again next month. We are going to be going over animal adaptations for January. All right. Thank again. Thank you for signing up and I hope you had fun. I'll see you next time.